Never get impressed by the size of your shadow. Always stare into the sun. Don't get too impressed with yourself because it's very fleeting and it could be gone tomorrow. You have to continuously be stretching your vision. I find what a lot, of, a lot of times happen is we get into these groups of people, start competing at that level, then you get to the top of that level and you're like, man, I'm killing everybody, I'm crushing everybody. As Soon as you get to the top of a level, you have to instantly start competing with the next level or else you're gonna start looking at your shadow, be like, oh, you'll go to the awards gala in Edmonton. You have your wheelbarrow. Right? There'll be some first place, there'll be some second place, there'll be, you know, you have a lot of trophies, but you gotta leave that thing going, now I'm at the bottom of the next league. Now I'm in the pros. If you spend too long looking at the people you've already competed with and already passed, you're gonna stay there. So you, you have to shift your mindset to look and go, you know what, this month was big as a junior broker, but now I have to redefine what big is as a senior broker to compete with the pros now and not get too impressed. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Ping Pong Mentorship. I'm here with Trey Lansdell, and we are serving up a Division 10 <laughs> of 10 <laughs> ping pong game. If you've seen ping pong before, this does not look like ping pong, doesn't resemble ping pong. We do have rackets, but don't hope you're not here to be impressed, but we are gonna have some fun today. We're gonna get some questions answered, so. You ready? I'm so ready. I've All never right. been more ready. Okay, let's you've, go. You've never seen a player like me. I'm gonna give like you me. some layups, like just some easy. Okay, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Okay. I meant to do that. I wanted okay. to see you dive for it into the cherries. <clears throat> oh boy. Okay, let's, <laughs> let's go again here. Sorry, that was too hard. That was aggressive. It's just a game, Steven. There we go. All right, man. Uh -huh. That's good. You want to ask? Yeah. Why don't we start with a question? I have a question. So, in the early stages of your career, when yeah. you were, you're just standing there looking at me. It's scaring me. Yeah. In the early stages of your career, when you were starting to go SMD, what were some things that you did? Uh, structures, uh, things you implemented, like training-wise, whatever, just to make sure you were running an effective team, hopping from marketing director to SMD. Right. So, senior broker in our business, you own your agency, get to the next level. The first thing that I'd recommend is making sure that you have a really good staff member. So now when you become a senior broker, you have to focus on things like operations. So I think one of the biggest mistakes people make, honestly, they get to SMD, they don't have a world-class assistant. They don't have anyone that does their paperwork. They don't have anybody that answers their emails because when you become a senior broker, you can either stay self-employed, you can run a business. Most senior brokers in this industry stay self-employed forever. They came here to, to build a business, they stay self-employed forever. Why is that? Well, it starts with not having an operations team. So I don't care if it's a, a girlfriend, a spouse, whoever, you need an operations team to start doing your paperwork, your admin, some onboarding stuff with agents to hand off that stuff. Not just someone who does paperwork, but someone that runs like operations of the internal part of your business. When I was making 150 grand a year, I was spending 40,000 a year on, on staff. Right, so you can't be afraid to invest in a good admin person. Like I've had my awesome assistant for eight years um, and uh, you have to invest in good people. So I'd, I'd say that's one big thing. Okay. And then <clears throat> team-wise, what would that look like? In terms of what? It's <sighs> a good question, I don't even really know. Like how are you running trainings? How are you orchestrating your team, managing your team, like outside of the operations side of it, but like at the agent level? Well, so you're gonna be plugging in probably to, to a bigger training with, the, with all of us, but you have to start to build your own identity within the team now. So now you're not a junior broker, you're a senior broker. So you have to have some kind of a training with your team, exclusive to your team, that builds the camaraderie and the pride of your organization. So you wanna build something, it's like an entrepreneur now. You wanna build an identity within the team identity. And that's another big thing that I think a lot of people are challenged with is they rely on their senior partners to run all the trainings, which obviously, which we'll all be a part of, but they don't have an identity within the team. So you gotta figure out what's your team identity gonna be. Have you thought of that? I've thought about it. How did you build yours? I wrote it down on paper. I wrote five or six things down in 2009, exactly what our identity was gonna be. Like stuff like we were the hardest working, best trained, uh, the tightest. So you write down four or five things and then you start thinking, okay, how do we become the tightest team? Lots of events in my house. How do we become the best trained? Closing training on Monday nights, right? How do we, you know, the sharpest team? Talk about dress code, 
showing up early, uh, growing your identity, shaving off your four foot beard, right? all the th changing your changing your yellow hair to something professional, right? Yeah, that's good. I've thought yeah. about that, but it, actually, like building it out is. I think what I would do, if I were you, I would sit down with you and Ash. I would I would write down our agency. Who are we? Stay aligned with obviously my vision, but who are we within the team? Who do we want to be a year from now? We're going to come back to Edmonton event a year from now as another as a first year senior broker team. How do we want to show up? Right? And get crazy with it. Make sure that people on your team know what they're joining, right? So yeah, that's, that's what I would say at Senior Broker. That's really important as a new Senior Broker to identify who are, what is your team identity. Okay. Yeah. Because you're right there, right? We'll come back to that. This month, Senior Broker. <sighs> Hallelujah. Let's go. Of course, of course, of course. All right, what else? So like we had, we had a really good year, right? And I, I wouldn't like say it was an amazing year, but we had kind of an explosion in like production, our numbers, all of that. Mm -hmm. How do you go from a point where you're having months like that, years like that, numbers like that, and shift your thinking from, oh, this might be a one-off to, I can consistently do it, I can continue to do it, this is our new standard and we're only gonna grow from here. Because I feel like at, at times I'm in kind of like a, like a fear state where I'm like, it could all go away tomorrow, you know? Mm -hmm. How do, you, how do you kind of shift from that? Did you ever go through that? Oh yeah. I, I think running a, a bit of fears is good to run away a little bit from, from it all falling apart. I did that for 10 years. But I think the key is, and I got this early on, never get impressed by the size of your shadow. Always stare into the sun. So you can't get impressed. You have a big month, don't, don't let it, don't get too impressed with yourself because it's very fleeting and it could be gone tomorrow. So, you have to continuously be stretching your vision. I find what a lot, of, a lot of times happen is we get into these groups of people, junior broker, associates, you start competing at that level, then you get to the top of that level, and you're like, man, I'm killing everybody, I'm crushing everybody. As soon as you get to the top of a level, you have to instantly start competing with the next level, or else you're gonna start looking at your shadow, be like, oh, you go to the awards gala, and you'll go to the awards gala in Edmonton. You have your wheelbarrow, right? There'll be some first place, there'll be some second place, there'll be, you know, you have a lot of trophies, and you're leaving, and you should be proud of the year that you had, but you gotta leave that thing going, now I'm at the bottom of the next league. Now I'm in the pros. If you, if you, if you spend too long looking at the people you've already competed with and already passed, or the business you've already built, you're gonna stay there. So you, you have to shift your mindset to look and go, you know what, this month was big as a junior broker, but now I have to redefine what big is as a senior broker to compete with the pros now and not get too impressed. You should be proud, but don't get too impressed with the shadow. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, that's a good question. And that's why, honestly, man, like how many times have we seen somebody get to, get to MVP as a marketing director, MVP as an associate, and die out? Literally, it's, they used to call it the curse, right? That curse has been broken recently, years, but you, get, you become the MVP, and then you flatline for a year or two. Why? because they never take their thinking to the next level. They get so impressed with the year they had, with the people they beat, the competition they smacked, but they realized that all the studs and studettes go to the next level, and they're still competing with the same people. They're competing with people that weren't even licensed when they got their blast big trophy, and now those people are at their level. So you really gotta keep, you really gotta keep things in perspective. Whoa, nice hit. We're getting better. Is Ash excited for Senior Broker? She is. We're, we're like, we just can't wait to be there, you know? Yeah. Do you guys do a team meeting weekly? Uh, we are going to now. We used to. Oh, right. You told and me then, you got it. Yeah. And then we rescheduled it. Yeah. So it's just like trying to create the framework now for everything we need when we go SMD. I want it to feel like nothing changes when we sign the contract. Yeah. Like it'll all, it'll, yeah. it'll all feel like, oh, we're just in some different chats now. Ooh. Yeah, so get things, get things set up now, right? Yeah. That leads to my third question. Yeah. So what are, what are some mistakes or traps or hurdles you see guys fall into uh, the SMD contract, but even higher than that, 
that one should avoid? Well, there's something called the six-figure trap. So what happens is you get to the highest contract, and it's no secret that our company has the best agency contract in the industry. It's not even close. It's why we bring a lot of people over. Um, you get the agency contract, you start making more money than you ever have. You make more money on less effort. A lot of, a lot of senior brokers' vision is tied to income. And they're making more money than they ever had, more money than they ever thought they would when they started. And they get to that level, and they might say they want more, but their actions is that they've arrived. And they're not, they're not pushing through. So the faster that you can go from one to two, the better. The faster that you can go from two to three. See, I never wanted my income to start with the same number the next year. Don't, stick, don't, don't get caught at 150, 160 for three years. Spend one year between one and 200. And then you spend the next year going from two to three and then next year from three to four. And if you just did that, 10 years from now, you'd be at seven figures. It's a simple game plan. I was obsessed with progress. Progress, 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 progress. Don't get comfortable. Don't look at the leaderboard and think two, two recruits is a big deal because you're in the top five. You really got to really set the standard of what you want, compete with the top performers, and then just chunk away at your income, your business. Every year, every, every number gets a little bit bigger. If you stay consistent on that, you'll never be complacent. You'll never be complacent. It's too easy to make money um, at senior broker and live a comfortable life. Yeah. But again, it's back to that self-employed mindset. You'll never build a business with that type of thinking. I think we're breaking rules. <laughs> I don't think this is how ping pong is meant to be played. Oh, nice one. Woo. So then once you, get, once you get to the contract of agency owner, how did you build agency owners? Because obviously some are better than others. I mean, most people will just get to the contract, they'll sit there, they'll never go beyond it, and they'll never even build one outside of them. Well, the key to building agency owners is you have to get, you have to get lots of different legs going. You cannot wait for people. Sometimes, sometimes the people who I thought were the next three agency owners, they weren't one, two, or three. They're like five, six, seven. You cannot look at your team. Like you can predict, you'd be like, man, I think these three would be the next three and let's pour into them. But you can't have the mindset of like, they're going to be the next three. One could quit tomorrow. So the key was I, I got lots of options, lots of different people fighting for that, that level. And I just, I wasn't focused on just a certain number. I was I, like, I wasn't just focused on the next contract. I was focused on five, 10, 50. Now I'm getting to 20. I'm focused on 25. I'm 30. I can see 40 frontline senior brokers. And that takes lots of width, right? Lots of different people engaged because as soon as you start building this thing on one or two different legs, and even if you have three studs in a leg, it's all part of one team. It just it gets this vibe of like they need you and your message doesn't land, right? I would just look at kind of how I built my business the one you came out of and just just model it. I did. I looked on the system today, including maps. If you if you drill down to 100, percent I have 19 and a half MDs in my base shop. 19 and a half. That includes all of them, at 100. percent So there's actually like 30 in the downline, but I have 19 and a half in the base shop. So there's, some aren't doing anything and some are doing lots, but there's a lot of competition. There's a lot of fighting for time. There's a lot of, it means something to, be, to be, get some time. You gotta build that in your base shop or else you're gonna be too involved with everybody's stuff. Yeah. And then once that's established, lots of building relationships, lots of trust, lots of challenging. Um, because it's gonna take some people some time. Like look at how long it took some of us to get to SMD. It's gonna take them time. But while they're learning and growing, find the next generation. While the next generation is behind the next generation, find the next, next generation. And all of a sudden, you'll have a factory. Two years from now, you'll have a factory. Every four months, boom, boom, pop out a senior broker. But if you have this mindset of like, oh, I have my next three, let's just help them grow. 
you're five, six years away. It changes the dynamic of your team. That's a better working relationship too, because then they don't feel like you need them. And yeah, and you and and you want to make them not that they are already aren't, but you want to make them proud of you as their leader. So while they're struggling and growing, and you have patience for them, you want to be winning. If you 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 winning is reliant on two or three people getting it going, when they're not going, you're not winning. You're going to all these conventions, you're not winning, you're not speaking, you're not on stage. It just the whole culture is off. It's harder. It, it's harder. It's harder to grow when you're not winning. So you can't, literally can't wait for anybody. You have to win no matter what. Win at no matter what. I don't want to say all costs because that's not what I mean. I mean, but win no matter what. Figure out a way to win. Yeah. Whoa. Ooh, we got we quite getting a little fancy. Spin. Oh, there we go. You got quite a little spin going. Uh -huh. Hey? Uh -huh. Not bad. Not bad. Three hits in a row. All time record. We're going to edit that in, right? Yeah. But can make we, it make it look like seven. Can we edit in? Yeah. Can we edit where it looks like he's got seven hits in a row? Is that yeah. possible? Okay. It's gonna be hard, I know, but Man, you gotta give us something to work with here, Trey. <laughs> can only do so much with what we've been given here. We don't know. Comments will be like, I don't understand. All of Trey's hits look the same. They're like, is it's that like a, it's a loop? A couple of great sixes uh, playing ping pong against each other. There we go. Here we go. Okay. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's getting dangerous. Work right. up a sweat yet? What do you do? One more question. What else should we talk about? <clears throat> it's not on my not on my list of questions, but what are <clears throat> I guess what what are some holes that you kind of see in my business or a business like mine that should be addressed, should be fixed? I think the holes in your business are probably very similar to the holes in a lot of people's business. I mean, you've obviously grown a lot. I think you've patched a lot of your holes the last four months. Like we talked, like you're really talented. So for you making income here, being self-employed for you is not hard. You're really good self-employed. You're really good at like, you need to do something, you get it done. You need to find a teammate, you find that teammate. You gotta write 100,000 points, you'll find it. The, the, the key now is duplication. How do you transfer what you're good at to your teammates? And I think you've started to implement that. I, you know, I was having this conversation with Kendra the other day and, and she's run this awesome CFT program and, and she was like, wow. She's like, you just never realize how much this team, the team needs it until you do it. So I think for you, it's like you're competing with some pretty heavy hitters in the team. You have to have the mindset of even if they work 24 hours a day, if you got five people that work, that if you got 10 people that work five hours a day, you got 50 hours in the day. Well, those people, how good are they at making a call? How good are they at booking a meeting? How good are they at, at doing a sale? How good are they at getting a result, getting a referral? It's not, it's not who works the most hours, it's who has the best trained team. And if you can, grind and work hard and duplicate better than anybody else, there's no competition. You can't compete with somebody who's better at duplicating. You can't. You can be the best closer, the best speaker, the best dresser, but if you duplicate at a higher rate, it's game over. Like you, you find four or five people that can do what you do, you'll be rolling. Yeah, that's been our next focus too. So like every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, what am I doing to duplicate, 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 duplicate? Who can do what I do? Phone call like I do, scripts like I do, clothes like I do. And what you'll see is the confidence will go up in your team. So that's the secret weapon. I just gave it all away on social media. There you go. Whoa, corner shot. <laughs> oh, beer pong, you used to play beer pong. <laughs> so when you told me you played pong, it was beer yeah. pong. There, there, there was pong, oh, okay. but you know, different. The shoes that, have new grip. I could have let that fall, but I hit it back anyway. It still got the point. So. It's these chairs. What's the score? It's 2-0. Um, oh, that was your point. See what happens when I play with my left sorry, hand? What, what, sorry, did you say it's 2-1 now? It's 1-2. Oh, okay. I'll let you have it. Three. I'll okay. go to five. Okay. Oh. All right, 4 1, 1 4. <laughs> Good game. <laughs> we ever playing again? 
What's that? Got to train for 500 hours. Yeah, he's got to go train. Train for 500 we'll more. We'll back. Oh my Thanks God. Thanks for joining, guys. <laughs> if you like this training, make sure to watch this next one because I know you're going to love it.